aboard the Mealy Pops Madness. <laughs> yeah, it's madness. Oh, I'll tell you something. It's a little bit today. No, it's wait till tomorrow. Yeah. So, what do you think about the show, like moving forward? Because I'm starting to see it shift, like to marketplace. I would almost rather, because I do both damage and walk, like get away from the booth. Same here. But people bring me stuff too, so. But you feel so, the reputation too. People always want to sit down, but it's just, it's just crazy. Well, I don't know. The thing is, and Jamil, you understand this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you build the reputation of yeah. paying, being fair, being, but most importantly, building relationships. And I always talk about you're the you're the king of that. Jude's the king of relationships, by the way. Go follow the real Jude Anthony on Instagram. Oh stop! He's got good. He's got he's got good inspirational quotes. And that's what it is. Like, I, and you, we know that. You know, as you know, as you know, worshippers of God, yeah, yeah. we talk about relationship. Yeah. You know, it's not. It's that's what it is. It's not religious relationship. And the money comes with it. You need to share that with people. You know what I mean? But again, and I understand it. Like, why do you think I drive two hours each way when I'm in Tampa to visit your your shop? Don't get me wrong. I I enjoy the company. I enjoy your wife's company, and I enjoy supporting your store. And it, it benefits both of us. Like, all right, you know what? I'll say this honestly. I may not make as much up front, but all in the back end, it pays itself off. Sure. You know. And there's friendships. That stuff you can't take. You can't. You can't take these cards with you, man. You know what I mean? Take it with you. Can't take it with you. You can't take prison with you. You ready? <laughs> what do you want me to be ready for? I'm always ready. Give me some new cases. You don't know about cases when you rent people. It's like it's a small detail, but we have our cases. We know how to handle them. We know how they close the lock, everything. We rent cases. They don't always open right. They look a little weird. We got different colors, so that's the kind of difference when you fly in and, and, and you're doing these things. You want your stuff to look good, though. You have to present things well. Most people do that. There's some here. Maybe you can find some <laughs> no where you just see like these. It's like a like a card box like threw up in a case, and there's just cards everywhere. We try to keep it orderly. You gotta be orderly with people so they know what they want. That's a big thing in our shop. People like they ask for stuff. You gotta know where it's at. Same thing in a show. The cool stuff with this card is not only is it one on one, 18, 19 immaculate, but you're never gonna find a Matthews Olympic jersey card. This card is one of a kind. You'll never really see this again. And you pulled it in a break, right? Yeah, I pulled it on Cyrus break. My yeah, name yeah. is Armin. Yeah. I put on Cyrus break. It's crazy. If you go to the YouTube. Uh, 1890. You soccer breakers, yeah, you, soccer check breakers you can check it out. He was shaking. Oh my goodness. Golazo para Brazil. Match worn material. One of one. Patch autograph. Pele. It's crazy. You just never see this card. I mean, it's so rare. I mean, upwards of eighty, hundred thousand dollars for this card. That's so cool, man. Armin, it's so nice. Yeah. Thanks for showing us Thank that. Thank you. How much are the mess? You're not really huge into the metal cards, but just, just curious. Just tell me the price. I, I don't even know. Armin says, he says, Ali, you can price. Ali, you. I, I literally <laughs> don't even know. That's how you do business. Yeah, you stuff. How, how much do you have in your pocket? Yeah. Not enough for that. Like, you want to shoot me some prices on these? We're open again. Just so you know, you say 10 pounds from the bottom. With this one, like you will get a lot. One out of 25. And yeah. Look at those patches. You know, like you're going to get probably just this one. The price I'm telling you. Yeah, I agree with you about this. Keeping in the original container. Yeah. The problem is the new wave of people with all the money. Don't want it. They want it in a slot. It's dumb. I agree with you. I'm on your side. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to even crack it. Ever. No, no, you don't want it. This is something that I don't even want to sell it unless I get a good price. Right. I'm going to, like I told you, I like 60 will be my bottom okay. if I'm going to get it. And if it's not, then I'll pass it. Like, I'll, I'll, 65 and 60? But this one, I'm an original guy. This stuff I got. This is not even get from the secondary hand. So you Everything you do is a legit stuff. I love the auto stuff. So I got you on that. More on this? You want to be at? Probably uh, about four. four. So then these yeah. guys? 
This guy, you told me the price is for I don't know the price on that one. The last, like, 47, I think. This is, this is true, dude. Yeah, 47, I think. So my man Armin brought in his fire. He's got fire. But I wanted to pick this up because you'll never see this card. I mean, it's just such a rare card. There are a lot of reprints, which Armin taught me about. I didn't know they made reprints. Yeah, they did a bunch of reprints. This is very rare. A little Bow Wow, baby. Hopefully, he'll keep it in his PC. Yeah, I don't think I want to trade this. It's unique. Yeah. It's just so cool. You, pop two. Two. Yeah, yeah. you know, you don't see much up there. You can't go wrong with these. Yeah. Game use LeBron, PSA 9. That could be from a part of the Lakers. Yeah, from, from the two or three that yeah. I already checked, it's exactly from there. Yeah. So that's dope because you're just not seeing that. And then, of course, I've been picking these up. So doing a deal for 87 <laughs> Done. All right, man. We'll do that. Sounds good. Thank you. Bro. Can I see your, like any Raiders you have, too? I like it. Can I see that stuff? Of course. Thank you, sir. Hey, I need to do some raw soccer. Yeah, Alex Morgan. You want to sell all this? Sure. And, like, raw cards, they do well with soccer with us. We got a lot of international people with you up. You got everything crazy, right? I mean, I have two of those. Oh, yeah, the two stickers. I don't have a lot of crazy. Can you talk about this Beckham card? What is that? It's a CD. I don't know anything about this. What's this roughly worth? I think, honestly, it's like 100 bucks. This is unique. Exactly. I like some of the odd stuff, like the Neymar, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that that people don't see. This is the stock I've been looking for. There you go. That's the stock you want. That, that's what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. want those. So this guy played for the United States, Claudio Reyna, and his son, Giovanni Reyna, now is the big oh, US yeah. guy. So these, I, I mean, I, I can buy a whole case, but I just don't know what the price is. These are more probably what I'd be interested in. Let me look up these guys. It's literally a sticker, right? But Holland is so hot, like this is considered as a rookie sticker, you know? It's not always be better if I just buy it all. You have a price for me, like, you, hey, I take this for this. You want everything in this case? Let's say the case and these stats. I mean, if you wanted to keep the Holland out of it, that's okay, too. Because, like, this to me is more the stuff that sells. We have. A wholesale price for everything except for the Holland. Let's say six for everything. And then three and a half without that. How about three thousand and you throw that in and I would do it. Okay, let's do thirty one. Thirty one? I mean We're not gonna walk for a hundred bucks, right? Take my wife to dinner, you know? Yeah, take her to dinner, that's fine. Alright. I'm Ben with uh, soccercards.net, soccercards.net on Instagram. Just a guy that loves soccer. There you go. Only Football. Soccer. Football. Let's go. Yoga Benito. So the big thing about that, the reason why that's important is when you buy bulk like that, it just makes more sense for me. And it helps the seller to get rid of all the stuff that just sits there. So I look at it as a trade-off. You make a fair price. There's some Holland stickers in there. There's some 101 Super Fractors, some other stuff. But soccer's a big thing. The women's soccer stuff is also helpful. I'm looking forward to processing that. You know, 3100 but I think you, in time, you grade some stuff, you sell some stuff, you can probably double that, triple that. I'm thankful for it, it was good, goodbye. Let's go find some more. You see this? <laughs> rats. Rats, rats, rats. 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 <laughs> I mean, these are all his rookie cards. 52,000, there you go, baby. This is cool because it's just like, uh, it's older stuff. I mean, Ernie Banks, big club. A lot of people love those old 50s stuff. That's awesome. The M&M's cards are so expensive. He had his own set, so I, I didn't own I haven't owned any of them, but the Diamond Kobe's, man. Those are cool. Those are a cool set. They were so cheap when they came out. I don't, I, don't, I think they're all over 20, 25. I, I, I haven't looked them up. But... Diamond Kobe's. Yeah, no, I've seen all the skin mods that in there, yeah. You know? That's crazy, man. Scary. 
great shot. Right? Keep it insane. Yeah, great. Yeah. Just, you know, I mean, I keep telling people like, just watch how much exposure cars have gotten because of him. You know, I mean, thank you. I wish you were here. It would have been fun. He's got to come to one of these. Emails. It's cool, man. It's good to see you. Great meeting, man. Bro, yeah. yeah I mean, it's the, it's open a shop, it's all basketball, it's like beautiful. So, it's, it's, if you don't know who he is, it's, it's pretty, pretty fun. You gotta know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've had a good time. And this, the Roadshow, baby, go check his website out. Card shop owner and card shop owner hanging out here at the Dallas Card Show. I'm with the one and only Jimmy Mahan, otherwise known as K. BC Kentucky basketball card. But we're here and I thought we'd talk about what we're seeing in the hobby, so I'll let him tell you what he's seeing here at the card show. What do you notice here in like the pulse of like basketball cards? It's amazing. I got a couple things I've noticed. Yeah. I was texting folks. One is the amount of basketball overtaking the amount of baseball. This is my first time here. It's awesome. And the vibe is so great. A lot of people here I've met and talked to are saying, hey, I watch your Instagram. This is great. This is my first show. And they're like, they love it. And that's really cool. The amount of soccer is amazing yeah. to me. I don't know how much you see, but I walk around like there are like full silver cases of soccer. You see that at multiple tables. It's a fourth sport, right? Oh yeah. There's a four big sports now. It's not just the three big sports anymore. And I think it's you like to me that's kind of all the earmarks of basketball. It's yeah. global. Like how do you look at this industry as the collectors, the shop owner, at yeah. all these different things, like what drives the market and the price of these cards. And to me, soccer has all the earmarks of being global like that. And if, if if England and other countries that are big and you know if they pick it up and they start to realize the, the resellability and the car shop starts bringing up there. They need shops there because that will take off. I'm already looking at it. I want to open one in Barcelona. Yeah. I'm noticing though the buyer is so different. When you and I would do car shows and go to car shows, there was definitely a dividing line between a dealer yes. and then a person buying from a dealer. Yes. Now there's no dividing. You know right. I mean, I think that's good and bad, but it's it's really unique as a shop owner to be able to see. It's exciting for me because it makes me think people are more educated. Yes. People are now valuing their cards much more. They know the stats on their cards, which is great because now you've built this upper echelon of how to sell and how to trade. You yes. know what I mean? So it's great. It's complicated, I think, in a lot of ways for the young people. Oh, no the one thing I would say is don't try and do everything. Pick a sport or pick a certain time you like and run with it. What would you tell new people, you know, the first show people? What do you tell them? You'll see so much. It's overwhelming. And it's like you don't pick up the whole dinner plate and, like, shove it in your mouth. Like, you eat some fries and you take yeah. a bite of this. And, you, and you've got to do that. It's easy to spend money the wrong way. And it's just be patient because it would be overwhelming. Yeah. And to me, what I always tell people, and I tell this back when I was just a collector doing some YouTube videos, what is your focus? Yeah. What are you focused on? Is it Kentucky basketball? Is it Florida Gators yeah, football? Yeah, yeah. And come into a show with a focus and hit some of those things that you know you'll go home happy with. If you see a great deal on a Luca or something else, yeah. and you just think it's a great one that you want to flip to later get back to your focus. Overload, done, no yeah, more money. Like, I got yeah, nothing sleeping left. on the couch. And it's like, okay, <laughs> second time I came back, have your focus. Yeah. Hit a couple of your focus pieces and then just ask questions and learn. And then you will get better and better at the card shop. I 100% agree with that. I mean, for us guys, we're card shop owners, but we just want to have fun in this and yes. educate people. Go check out Jimmy's shop if you're ever in Lexington, Kentucky. The Kentucky Roadshow, they have a website, right? You got, oh, yeah. Everything on the web. Up. You got their store. Go check out his Instagram. That's so cool. I think that's what it's about. We have fun with cards. You know? That's right. It's a vehicle yeah. to impact people. There are a lot of vehicles. It's one I happen to love and he loves. If we're not doing that, then there's something wrong with us. You know what I mean? It's always been a community. It's always been a hobby and, and people, you know? Yeah, I was telling somebody about that a minute ago. It's those generous communities. Like, hey, man, you sure. need this. I don't think that happens in real estate, right? Where it's like, hey, man, let me yeah. get like, yeah. this is, it's worth being Well, thank you, man. When we started our Instagram, I had like two people I watched, and it was RBI crew, I think, maybe Bullpen, and then you, because I just wanted to see, like, what is Instagram about? So you connected with a younger generation and older generation, right? Right. And people now use cards and platforms to get with the times. People like go follow and be a part of this stuff because it's exciting. You know? I do the same. I always yeah. tell people go watch him. Yeah, it's great. Fun. See y'all. <laughs> Thanks. So this is it. You want to shout out? Do your yeah. Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, do your Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Sports card brokerage. Yeah, sports Check card brokerage, out. man. He's from. We got Florida family. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Durant. This is the E tops. The E tops. They're out of 14.99. Their number. People don't like them because of the E tops, but I think they're cool. They got bright. Yeah. Like I said, I'll meet it in the middle. Here at 11, I always
Yours at 10, I'll meet you at 10 five. We do like, uh, like, we'll do like 10 seven. I won't even go 50, I'll do 10 seven and then we're done. You give me a fist bump. Bang. <laughs> Tell them about who you are on Instagram. Tell them, tell Atlantic them. City, New Jersey. There you go. Tell Came to Instagram Dallas. Handle. L. Goggers, 643. What do you, what do you like the to buy? Tell here. Them. LeBron James, bought some Steph Curry, awesome deal. How'd man. you find us? On Instagram, my brother. So day uh, three, Sunday, and we're looking to uh, make some plays on buy, buying stuff for the shop more so today. It's more lower end today. You're not gonna make deals on higher end stuff. So walk around a little bit. The show ends, but really people are like leaving now. So uh, we'll see if we can catch some people on the way out. All right, so my goals are this. My goals are simply to go out, focus on people that may want to move some maybe bulk, but not cheap, cheap stuff because we're flying. So I'm gonna really look for some deals, maybe buyouts, opportunities. We're gonna start in the other room because this main room is really high end dealers that aren't really looking to sell out or anything. So let's see what we can do and we'll see what we show up with. So, so I'm calling the shop because there we got Panini worn out. We got uh, Donner's Baseball came out today. So there's all sorts of stuff coming out. What's up, Goose? What's up, man? How's the shop in Gainesville, Florida? I got you on camera. We're, we got you uh, remotely on camera. So uh, you got Panini 1 to put out and Donner's Baseball, right? Yeah, I already put out the Donner's Baseball premiere to text you about the Panini 1. The price is on the website. Yeah, I know. I just wanted to make sure it was good to put out. Okay. You can put it out, man. All right, brother. Appreciate you, man. Back in Gainesville. Hold down the shop. Yes, sir. Let's go. Magic motion. Check these out. These are all the cars from like the 80s and 90s. They used to make like them for everything. Like here's Dick Tracy and they have like, what, what come in here? Like non-sports, E.T., right? Batman Returns. They would make them for every kind of film and they weren't worth nothing, but now we're starting to see them slowly get become valuable. It's kind of funny. Much? Not a lot yet. It's getting there though. Like there's X-Files. These don't sell for a ton right now, but non-sports is starting to pick up. Crazy. People buying everything. Thank you, sir. This is a Brian card right here. Mm -hmm. Chunky Chicken. He buys a Chunky Chicken mascot card. I don't know why he buys it. No, that's a... Uh, Not the Chunky Chicken, the... Uh, Padres, San Diego, is that what yeah, it is? Yeah. Padres oh, Chicken. Fine. Brian buys the weirdest. Uh, see, I did a deal with Ryan. Can I do a deal with you? That's the question. So what? Hey, so what's the highest paying Marvel card? That was like one question. Yeah, what, what do you guys think the highest Marvel card right now? The Stan Lee PSA 10? Yeah, there's a Stan Lee PSA, uh, Stan Lee from 1990 Marvel Impul. It's got his face on it and then it has like Spider-Man and other people on it. And it was worth like what, 50 cents? Yeah, it's that. 50 cents maybe six months ago, eight months ago. And now PSA 10 is 2,000, 3,000? Yeah. But you gotta, you gotta know this stuff, people, because you could have found those in my stores, dollar, like 10 cent boxes, and those kind of things, and it's like, shows, you pick that stuff up, and they get some good grades, nines and tens. I mean, you, what is that, I don't even know what that percentage is. No, you know the math, it's crazy. No, a million I have no percent. idea. It's a million percent. No, it's not. I mean, if we can make a deal to buy them all, I'll buy them all. I mean, there's a nice one. There's a couple of good ones. In there. Vision, I mean, yeah. I'll take the good with the bad. So those, and I guess all these. Jean Grey, Quicksilver. All right, here's how I see sketches. They're nice, they're not there yet. Uh -huh. There's a lot of them, and there's a lot of weird artists that people don't collect. Sure. So the percentage on that, I'd, I'd be interested in what you need to be at. I do, so looking at about 300 for all of them. I, I, I'm one of the guys, that if you give me a price that makes sense, that's right around where I'm gonna be. Would you throw these two in? Get 300? Yeah, why not? These turtles? Sure. Done. Yeah, why not? Sweet. So here's my man Kevin, make a deal on sketches. Check him out, he's in Dallas at the car shows if you wanna come, and he's got a, got a cool stuff in non-sports, all you non-sports collectors out here. Come visit him, and uh, yeah, he'll do you right. It's really tough to value that part of the 200,000. What was that about? You're saying this and 50 up.
we walked literally from that Sasha deal over to this other table where people were saying there was a gold LeBron uh, rookie. And so I went over there and we see both of these LeBrons as you guys see in the clip. There's an 0304 Topps Chrome Gold LeBron and then an 0304 Bowman Chrome. The Bowman Chrome is overshadowed because you see this Topps Chrome Gold. What's nuts to me is that the card was just even there. It's like kind of a grail card to see it and to think, man, this is like a $1.5 million card just sitting in a case. Uh, kind of blew my mind because that card is so iconic. You know, there were people were trying to make plays on it. I don't think it got sold at the event, but it was just kind of unique to see. And I think for a lot of collectors, the Sasha kind of deal was happening and that was in the side. So it was almost like overshadowed, but I got a chance to go over there, take a, a look at it. Wasn't really able to buy it, but I, I just think for, for collectors at the show, you haven't seen that card in years. And it's the PSA 10 0304 Topps Chrome Gold LeBron, which I mean, is kind of like a grail in my mind. You have the exquisite RPA and you have that 1A and 1B. And it was just wild to see it. Exciting for me to see it and to see the kind of the cards that were at the show. It's right next to the 0304 Bowman Chrome as well. But just a really cool, unique card uh, that was there at the show. People trying to make plays on it. Very massive, massive, massive. Five minutes of Saturday night here, Brian and I, and just kind of talk a little bit about the show, give you guys some insight on some things that we bought. It's like trading night out there, right? I mean, it's just crazy. People are all doing sort of stuff. We got away in the side room, and I have another deal that I'm going to be looking at. But every night here at the Dallas Card Show, people are just buying and selling in the lobby, and it's so great for the hobby in a lot of ways. So Brian and I thought we'd just talk about a few cards that we picked up, one that we split, and then some other things that I got and, and why I got them. So we got this, what day was that? Oh, we got that yesterday. Yeah, so fast break gold uh, LeBron that we picked up. We paid 9500 for it or something like that. Yeah. The thing about the card, it's not a $9,500 card, I don't think. I mean, not right now, it may be 10, 12, but I think down the line, that's a bigger card. It's a gold LeBron, fast break, it's affordable. Like our goal with buying a card like that is to split and something fun for us to do together at the shop and then uh, hopefully sell it, obviously to make profit. What do you think our plan should be for this? I don't think we should rush to move. You can't go wrong with a gold LeBron. It's not like it's a volatile player yeah. as a Luca or a Trey or Mitchell Robinson say, <laughs> but it's definitely a very desirable card, especially gold, one of the most desirable parallels out there. And I think the cool thing about that is that we have a gold LeBron that we can be stuck with, whatever. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's not a big, a big problem. I wouldn't be upset with that. And it's a, Min gem, but the thing is, I'm starting to really get over like the min gem, min gem pluses, max gem, multiple gems, uh, gem, gem, gem. It's just <laughs> dumb because here's why it's creating this sub marketplace on cards that is already so highly subjective. That if a card is a gem in, it's a gem in, you know, and it's a BGS 9.5, it's PSA 10, and it is what it is. I mean, obviously, when they have better subs, it's great, but I mean, sometimes the comps show that the gem pluses do better than the gem minuses. Right, we're gonna see that, and there's always gonna be a value in there, but most people who do it, it's just to say that they have those subgrades, right? It's still a gem mint card. Some people will say, well, it's got this sub or this sub, and the bump, and it's very difficult. I mean, it's not easy to get that stuff to, to be done, or if you wanna crack it and do it, you may actually lose the grade sometimes. So I think with this card, it's, it's a no-brainer. Here's one that I just got yesterday. This is a, a Durant Refractor 9.5. I think we did somewhere around 24 at the last PSA 10 to 36,000. But for me, a lot of you guys might be following the Duncans, the Iversons, the Kobe's, the Nash's, the guy. Finally getting their love. The Garnett. The thing about it is the rare stuff, I think is still gonna keep going up. Not a bad card to pick up. I think that's probably a 25K card. And it's not a bad card for the next two, three months to see where they go. We've got this Luca on actually uh, pre-set up day. I think I paid 3,500 for it. Uh, a lot of people are scared money with Luca. I think right now. I think numbered select reds that are PSA 10s. You can't go wrong with the numbered It stuff. doesn't matter. I mean, I don't want selects that are silvers and stuff like that, but I think that kind of stuff, there's still a lot of room, you know, with those. And then the two big cards, just you might see on some of the other vlogs and stuff like that, Charizard seemed to make a comeback. So the nines that I bought, I got both of them, and we've had offers on them, but I just, I think there's a lot of play on this still on the first edition. So if you guys are out there buying Pokemon Charizard first edition and get it cheap. And then lastly, here's a baseball stack. Like here's the thing, you can't not buy that. I bought these for 325 each. Tatis out of 15. Patch out of I think there's just so much room on this kind of stuff. And then I got the Wander Sterling on the first day which all his stuff is starting to just really pop. What's your thoughts on Wander? Wander's the number one prospect. Wander's gonna be great. A good statement. Wander's gonna be great. And here's a kind of sneaky buy. Picked up this Dominguez out of 18 FOTL green ice, right? That's what they call it? Yep. People say, oh, it's Prism, it's Collegiate, yada, yada, whatever. They uh, sleep on the Panini baseball. I paid 300 bucks for the card. I mean, you can't go wrong. This has gotta be a thousand dollar card at easy. I mean, it's probably more than that. So real dope card of Dominguez. And then just a couple big ones that we paid. I mean, you probably see in the post that I've been picking up Durant refractors. Don't really go into this. It's pretty straightforward. But here's the last one I got today at the end of the show. Shout out to Jacob and just kind of hanging out with him, cool dude. But this Tom Brady patch auto, you're not seeing much of this spot. And it's the jumbo. What do you think? That's game used too. Yeah. 
Yeah. You can't go wrong with game use. So hard to find the football game use now. Especially quarterbacks, right? Yep. Yep. So be buying that stuff, but I just think be smart on how you're buying. Think about what you're buying. Don't get caught up in the race of having this or having that. Listen, there's a ton. I think about a ton of Chronicles and Prism and Optic and all these nines and tens of stuff that I'm starting to call junk wax slabs and I'm really starting to see the mass effect of it. I mean, it's just everywhere. Yep. I try to stay away from that <laughs> stuff as much as I can. Definitely looking for the more rare stuff. Nine out of ten walk ups, would you say? Is Absolutely. primarily that for that, buying? They're either graded or they're raw. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. And we buy a lot. We have the massive buying signs. We probably get a hundred people a day, maybe more, between Brian, me, Blaine, Meredith, and there's a bunch of that. So be careful out there, guys. Don't be loading up on a ton of that stuff. Some guy, they offered me a PSA 10 Jaws at 300, and I didn't even want them. <laughs> Prisms. You know what I mean? I really didn't want them. So just be thinking about that kind of stuff. But there's a little recap. Give you guys some insight. Later. Let's go. So my man Kevin and I was grinding this out for about three hours. These are cards that I came to have a to have I mean, goals for the just to pick up. We want more of this stuff. But I said, you know what? He walks up just casually. Hey, do you want this? <laughs> yeah. He knows me from Instagram and I with well, the extractors and stuff. So now, you know, I was like, I gotta make a deal for this. So you give up what you come to get to get something else that you didn't expect to get. And there's of course money involved. He's not getting just this. That's that's the way it goes. So uh, you're on Instagram. Yeah. You want to tell the people? The uh, Kevster 99. Kevster 99. Yeah. And uh, he's also got awesome stuff on there. So last deal of the, the show probably Sunday. Yeah. And uh, we're done. So awesome. So the last deal of the weekend was this crazy kind of culmination on Sunday, where a young guy Kevin comes up. He shows me a black LeBron Chrome refractor 0304, a PSA nine. And he shows it to me very casually as there's five other people at our booth trying to sell to me. And it was very hectic on Sunday because we had people in different places. So he kind of hands it to me. There's three other deals happening. People are trying to sell to me. And I just think, just gonna kind of casually hand me this card. So I take it and I say, what do you want for it? Yada, yada, we kind of come up with some numbers. There's another guy at my table who sees it. And he actually starts, tries to start making a deal for that card as well. And I almost lost the deal because that guy had some stuff that, 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 that I think Kevin wanted. But I heard him say Durant Refractor. So what's that, what happens is I say to Kevin, hey man, I have a Durant Refractor in my backpack. I bought it here, but I don't really want it. So I actually bought two, and I had two PSA 9 Charizards that I had bought at the, at the, at the show. And it, when the deal, as you guys see, one PSA 9 Charizard, one Durant Refractor, have to go towards that black LeBron, because it's just you know a bigger card that I want. And the cool thing about it was you forget sometimes the stuff you might be putting away that's not even out for show. I almost lost that deal because I didn't have that card out, but I told Kevin, he actually left, told me he would come back, came back again, try to work a deal with the Charizard. I think he was a little uncertain about the Charizard. He didn't know that market very well. And he left again, came back, we're sitting down, and what you see at the table is us finishing the deal. The crazy thing is, he, me and he and I made the deal and he said to me, uh, before we make the deal, I'm gonna go call my friend because he wanted to pay me a hundred and something thousand dollars in cash, but he left today. So in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm gonna lose this deal again. So I simply said to him, hey man, listen, if he didn't pay a hundred what thousand dollars cash uh, for it then, I don't think he's gonna pay it for you now. Let's just get this deal done. So I think he kind of listened to me and it was cool because we've been talking online and stuff and we made the deal for the Black LeBron. So I didn't think I'd pick up that card at the show, but it kind of just an example of you know 125, $135,000 PSA 9 Black LeBron that is a uh, just a card you don't see often. A PSA 10 just sold for 484 of that card. So another uh, LeBron I can add to our collection for the store and for PC and stuff like that. And just a fun way to kind of end the show in Dallas. So that's a wrap for Dallas. I think the best part was probably meeting all the people that buy from us face to face. For me, I do all the shipping, so that was super cool. Um, flying out here is definitely something I would love to do again, probably. But uh, overall, it's really good. Anything? 30 seconds or less, so what do you think of the show? Oh, it's a good show, good show. A lot of buying, a lot of selling, a lot of trading, a lot of deals going down. You know, I can't wait for the next one in May. Wait, what do you think of the show? It's been great. I can't complain. I'm leaving back with less parts than I brought. It's got that. It's pretty cool. I'm happy. So the show is over. It's last day Sunday. Uh, we got probably a couple more hours here. Uh, it's been a good show. I think people are, um, are, are frenzy over cards. And the hobby's in a good place, so can't wait to get back to the shop. I think it, uh, Joey and Guzman have been holding it down real well, and we're excited to just keep seeing the card hobby grow and really pops to be a part of it. So episode two, that's a wrap for us. We'll see you for episode three.